over here, this is the best uh, face of the king. The second statue to the left, you can see the face of King Ramses II in here, still in a good condition as well. Yeah. To know something, in ancient times, the king didn't live here. The king used to live in a house or a palace outside the temple, not inside the temple. And the ancient Egyptians used to call the house of the king or the place where he used to live in ancient language, Bir'a. Bir'a means the great house. Later on, they used to call the man who was living inside the great house, Bir'aun. It means the great man who's living inside the great house and ruling the country. Bir'aun, Pharaoh, till we say it right now, Pharaoh. This is why we call our kings Pharaohs. Who used to live inside the temple here? The God himself. So the temple is like a church or a mosque. The ancient Egyptians had to come here to pray and to give the God the offerings. So what happens here? The king had to come to the temple at the outer entrance. He had to wash his hands. Then he had to wear a robe. Then while he's walking inside the temple to go inside to meet the god Amun-Ra, the high priest is walking in front of the king and he's burning incense. On both sides of the king, two more priests are reading hymns from papyrus paper. Some other priests are playing music. Till they go inside, the king had to carry the golden statue and to boat it on a big wooden boat. Then 16 priests carry the boat on their shoulders and they bring it out and they put it on that altar you see here. Then the locals come from the outer door carrying all the offerings like milk, wine, beer, fruits, whatever. They pray and they give the God the offerings. After it was only for the locals to have to come and to pray and to give the God the offering. Well, uh, if you look carefully, you can see the boat of the God Amun-Ra. It looks like this. It has a ram head here at the back and the ram head in the front. Huh? And there was a box. They keep the statue of the god inside it and they carry it on the shoulders from that part you see here. Can you see it? Yeah. Then you can see one of our kings standing in front of him, an offering table, has bread, animals like uh, geese. You can see flowers fruits, many things. But how we can tell who this man? How we can tell this is a king? Maybe he's one of the locals. From his cartouche. You know, once you see a figure standing and you see a cartouche, know directly he's a king or a queen if she was a lady. Because in only kings and queens used to write their names in cartouches. This is a royal symbol. And you will see Every king used to have two cartouches. Why? One, we call it the birth name of the king. This is his birth name. And the other name is the coronation name. Because, for example, in ancient times, we have a very common name, which is Ramses. We have 11 Ramses. Once he's ruling Egypt, how we know this is the first, the second, the third from the coronation name? Because the birth name of all of them, Ramses. And the coronation name tells you the first, the second, the third, you see here. So this is King City the second is sta standing, burning incense in front of the god amun -Ra. And this is what we call it hieroglyphic. The text you see here, the writing. Hieroglyphic means the holy writing. So anybody gives me a name, I can write it down for you. <laughs> <laughs> 
P. P. E. E. T. T. H. H. B. 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 Not P. Okay. B. <laughs> Sorry. So, this is a leg. Okay. Then E is a feather. T is bread. H is a rope. <laughs> and you are like, like this, like a princess. So from your name. My queen <laughs> <laughs> This is a leg. You like stability in your life. You don't want any problems. Feather, it means that you are fair. Uh, bread. <laughs> very good. And rope, you make good relations, very strong relations. <laughs> Later on, if anybody would like to try his name, I can write all your names. For the Hybo style hall, a place has columns, then the Holy of Holies would they keep the statue of the god inside. You can see here statues for King Ramses III, and any statue for any king has crossed arms, arms on the chest. We say that he is standing as a mummy. And later on, I'm going to tell you why this is the mummy form. Why all the mummies, if you look in Cairo Museum, all of them have crossed arms on the chest. Not quite all. <laughs> <laughs> ladies, ladies like this. <laughs> so you can see here, the statues, and some of the statues, headless statues. Yeah. And if you look carefully, you feel they were cut from the same level. You know what happened? Since Arabs came to Egypt 641 yeah, after Christ, yeah, yeah, yeah. they didn't care about the monuments. This temple has no value for them. So they used to come here and cut the statues and use the blocks to build their houses. This is why you look, you can see they were cut from the same level. Well, ladies and gentlemen, uh, one of the great pharaohs we have in Egypt, we call him Ramses the Great or Ramses the Second. And this is his statue. Believe it or not, this statue made out of one single piece of stone out of granite. And granite, the ancient Egyptians had to bring granite from Aswan, all the way from Aswan to Luxor here. So you can imagine how it was very heavy to bring a huge piece of granite, then they carve it to make a statue for King Ramses the Second like this. Ramses II was something different from all the other kings. Ramses II ruled Egypt 67 years. years just to build the columns here. In this area, 200 years to build all the columns. Look at all the columns carefully. You feel they were done by a machine. All of them have the same size exactly. Look at how they were very smart to choose the right location to carry all the columns you see here. Is this all from Aswan? Uh, the, no, this is sandstone from local stone from here. Local from here, so yes. yeah. yeah. If you look carefully at all the columns, you can see all of them have the same height, but the two rows of columns in the center, which uh, is this one behind you here, and the one here, are much higher. More what you can see on both sides. Believe it or not, in ancient times, at the time they built the columns, there was a roof, a stone roof on the top. 
So why they made the two rows of columns in the center are much higher. They made a side wall above this row of columns to be the same height of the one in the middle, and they made windows, which you see up there. And they did the same on the other side, here. By this way, the sun rays will come through the windows. It will be here in the middle. Why? Because when they carry the golden statue of Amun-Ra from inside to outside, and they're passing from here, the sun rays on the golden statue will reflect the sun rays. Huh? Light will be everywhere. You can imagine the walls, the ceiling, everything was painted like the ceiling you see up there. This is the original color, 3,500 years old. The one you see at the top, yes. So everything was like this. <laughs> if you look carefully, feel cement and restoration at the lower parts of the columns, because in 1887, at the time the temple was buried by sand and dust, uh, a French excavator called Legrand came here, and he decided to clean the temple, to take the sand out. So he flooded the temple by the Nile flood. Imagine the water will wash away all the sand and the dirt inside the temple. So the, sand, the water washed away all the colors and the writing and the, uh, carving on the lower parts of the columns. And some of the columns were collapsing. He didn't mean it, but it was an idea just to clean the temple. We didn't know then, did we? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the best way to do things. Yeah. You feel she's very happy. She's smiling. If you look at her face. And she's holding the hand of the king, and she's introducing him to uh, the god Amun-Ra, the god sitting on the throne of uh, heaven, you see that. Then on the columns, we have a very famous symbol. You will see it everywhere. Something looks like a cross, like this one here. This what we call it, Ankh. Ankh means life, that symbol you see here. Why? Because they say it looks like the Nile River in Egypt, running from the south to the north. By the Mediterranean Sea, we have two branches, and this is a Mediterranean Sea. Unification between the south of Egypt and the north of Egypt. From the Nile River, you can drink water, you can catch fish to eat, you can irrigate the plants, so it is a source of life. life. This is why they called it life or ank. Yeah, so this is why they call it ank or life. They call it an obelisk. Yeah. There were so many of them outside here in this area, many of them in different countries like in Rome, in Turkey, and in, in many countries. The one you see here belongs to a queen called Hatshepsut. She built a great temple in the west bank of Luxor, and this one was built during <coughs> the time she ruled Egypt. The one of Queen Hatshepsut is 29 meters the height, 323 tons of granite, one piece. One piece. one piece, 323 tons of granite, one piece. <laughs> how they cut it from Aswan, how they moved how they it, it, how they get it, and how they put it in the place. Oh 29 meters, 323 tons of granite, one piece, and it rests on the pedestal, no foundations. <laughs> but look at the lovely carving on the granite. You know, it's very hard to carve in the granite, lovely symbols like this. a symbol of good luck in ancient times and this is the biggest grand scarab we have in Egypt and they say stories about the scarab they say that if you walk around the scarab anti-clockwise three times this is for good luck five times for long life seven times you will be rich and healthy if you would like to get everything <laughs> if you'd like to, you do like three then you stop for like a second two and you stop for a second and two more in total you do like seven